But for simply the best example of product promotion, get a load of this from last week's Daily Telly. Mobile Radiation Shield Released By Stephen Fennick, technology writer. Yes, this new magic shield is smaller than a five-cent piece, but stick it on your mobile phone and wave goodbye to stress, sickness and disease. Sounds too good to be true? Surely not. So, Stephen, what's the secret of this high-tech defence? Patented sympathetic resonance technology. Come again? Patented sympathetic resonance technology. Wow, sounds fantastic. Tell me more. The Q-Link Mini, priced at $48, is programmed with naturally occurring frequencies, which resonate with our body's energy system, just like a piano string would resonate with a tuning fork. Amazing. And don't doubt it's true. According to Q-Link Australia's John Giron, whose quotes provide almost half Stephen Fennick's shameless advertorial, the Magic Mini Shield is based on technology, which has been... scientifically proven and tested for the past 20 years. We'll come to that in a moment. But could it actually work? Well, no. According to Professor Vitas Anderson at Swinburne University's Brain Sciences Institute... A little button cannot shield or neutralise the electromagnetic fields emitted by a mobile phone. And here's the rub. If it could, your mobile phone would stop working because... It relies on the RF transmissions to make the radio link with the mobile base station. So much for miraculous mini-shields. As the website, My Colleagues Are Idiots, neatly sums it up. If you can't smell the bullshit already, then your nose is broken. So why is technology writer Stephen Fennick, who should know better, persuaded by this obvious quackery? And why does his brother Mario, from Channel 9's Sydney footy show, promote Q-Link on the company's website? It's been great. Uh, I'm always a pretty sort of tense sort of guy, and... Uh... I must admit that uh, since I've had the Q-Link on, I feel a bit more relaxed and uh, a lot easier on the kids and probably not, not, not as uh, jumpy. And uh, my golf, my golf has been sensational. Now, we at Media Watch naturally suspected the worst, that Stephen was using his Telegraph column to give brother Mario a helping hand. Stephen started enthusing about Q-Link back in 2004 with his first breathless puff, and then again in 2005 which was around the time that Mario started promoting his $1,300 gold-plated Q-Link pendant. Hi, and welcome to my website. Over the years, I've worked with hundreds of different businesses. I've helped them build brand awareness and increase their sales through TV, radio and print media campaigns. And I can do the same for you. And indeed, he's done that for Q-Link, who tell visitors to Fenex website... Since Mario has been promoting our range of Q-Link products, we have seen a measurable increase in sales across all demographics. But you know, sometimes there's an innocent explanation, and this is one such time. Mario's manager says he does not get paid for promoting Q-Link, and it seems he and Stephen rave about the product just because they believe it works. So, no impropriety, just credulity. Now, it has to be said, many professional golfers swear by their Q-Links but the highly regarded microwave news in the United States is not so easily persuaded. Scams galore. The gizmos promising protection against electromagnetic fields include bracelets, pendants and headbands. Two of the best known are BioPro and Q-Link, which are really no different from all the others. That's to say, they don't work. Q-Link claims that research by the University of Wollongong scientifically proves its devices are effective. The study it refers to, conducted by Professor Rodney Croft, was funded by Q-Link's manufacturer, Claris Products International. It was described four years ago by the respected UK website Powerwatch as... Small and ill-sciencet, virtually worthless. And even the study's author, Professor Rodney Croft, dismisses its value, at least in supporting the claims made by Q-Link. Telling MediaWatch last week... I do not believe that the inconclusive nature of my study provides any evidence that the product does what it claims. None of this, but none of this, was in Stephen Fennick's article. And Stephen, it should have been. It's not yours or the telly's job to flog this stuff, it's to strive for the truth. A strange, old-fashioned concept, I know, but one that still has some value. And before we go, I'd like to say a big thank you to everyone who sent in tips this year, and an even bigger thank you to the magnificent team who make this programme possible. MediaWatch will be back in the new year with your regular host, Jonathan Holmes, in the chair. 
Until then, from me to watch and from me, goodbye and good night. <laughs>